One of our favorite secret weapons for problem solving and negotiating is local real estate attorney Brian Lytle. In this series of Get Smart, Brian shares Hi, insights Brian on Lytle. trusts. In today's Get Smart segment, we're going to take a look at trust, both from a buyer and a seller's standpoint. Uh, this segment's not specific legal advice. That's always fact-dependent. Rather, it's a broad overview. And I'd like to note that the Liz Morn Associates agents use three different contracts over the company's geographic area. The rain contract, which is used in the uh, Virginia Peninsula, CVR used uh, in Richmond, and then the VR, Virginia Realtors contract, used uh, by Liz Moore in the Williamsburg area, but it's also used across the state. Each contract handles things a bit differently, but um, particularly for this segment, there are no real distinctions. And in any event, all of those contracts are fairly drafted for both buyers and sellers, so that allows the Liz Moore and Associates uh, agent to use the same contract whether he or she is representing you as a buyer or representing you as a seller. So again, the purpose of this Get Smart segment is to look specifically at trust, and of course there are other segments that help with other provisions of the contract. In any event, ask your Liz Moore and Associates agent if you have any, any questions or need direction. So first looking um, at, at a trust as a seller. Uh, the first thing, of course, we'd note that the property must actually be owned uh, by the trust. And technically, the trustees hold legal title to the property. A trust isn't, or at least under Virginia law, an actual legal entity like a, a corporation or an LLC. Rather, a trust acts through its trustees. In order uh, to get to closing and have the deed be accepted, almost certainly going to need a copy of the trust and what's known as a trust certification. It's not actually required under Virginia law to provide a full copy of the trust and uh, you know sometimes you may want to keep that private but as a general proposition it's just a lot easier to provide the trust rather than to try and do some specific certification that includes um, the specific powers and issues that everyone's looking at. Uh, so don't be surprised and have those documents ready. Potential issues where a trust is a seller. Uh, it's not unusual for a trust to name co-trustees or to have more than one. And so one issue comes up is whether uh, one of the trustees needs to sign or both or all three or whatever the case may be. And that really just depends on how the trust is written and that's one reason typically you need to see the trust itself. It's also going to be reviewed to determine whether or not the trustees actually have the power to sell the real estate. Uh, that's almost always the case, but it's not always the case. So that's that needs to be reviewed. The employer identification number or tax identification number, if the original creators of the trust are deceased, then the trust has almost certainly become irrevocable. And in that case, um, the trust should, or the trustees really should apply for a tax identification number and that will be asked for at closing. Uh, that's in the case where you have um, a, a deceased creator of the trust. You can also have situations where the trustees are now deceased, so we need to determine who the successor trustees are, whether they have the power to sign, so on and so forth. So as a seller, it's best to always consult an attorney early on in the process to ensure uh, that the closing will go smoothly if you have a trust as a seller. Naming the trust, uh, the trustee as a seller on the contract, uh, the short way to do that is using my name as an example, Brian D. Lytle, comma, trustee. That's really sufficient in the trade, but the better uh, way in the long form uh, is shown here, Brian D. Lytle, trustee, and then it would include the language of the Lytle Family Revocable Trust, comma, dated January 1, comma, 2020, for example. We often go with a short form because uh, 
most of the contracts these days are signed or at least filled out electronically, usually signed electronically. And so the, the form contracts done online really don't allow or typically don't have enough space to include all of that language. So it would be okay to, to do it this way. Maybe you put an asterisk here um, in order to um, reference a different you know, some other blanks where there's more room in the contract to make it clear which they're trustees of what trust. Lastly, it's not shown on the outline, but one problem we run into is, you know, it's not unusual that a trust actually, the trustees haven't actually opened a bank account. And so the settlement agent hired by the buyer is going to want to issue the seller's proceeds payable exactly the way the contract and the deed read. So the proceeds check would be made payable to the trustees, but if the trustees, the trust, don't have a bank account, then it's an issue and it's hard to deposit that money. So that issue really ought to be resolved well before closing, and the best way, of course, is to ensure that a bank account is, in fact, open. If you're a buyer and you want to uh, take title into your trust, then it's a similar sort of situation. Uh, particularly if there's bank financing involved, they're going to want, uh, uh, going to need to see the trust and have an attorney certification or a certification of the trust to show that it's in force, have the powers, uh, can make a loan, sign a deed of trust, which is the lien. Um, and so that's why I've noted here if there's financing, the lender's going to have to approve that in advance. Potential issues for a buyer. Uh, same really in a sense as a seller. Um, if there's more than one trustee, do both have to sign or all three if that's the case or can just one sign? And the only way to answer that question is to review the trust and to have someone certify it. Look to make sure the trustees have the power to actually purchase the property and more importantly have the ability to, or just as importantly, uh, if there's financing involved, have the ability and the power to um, borrow money, grant a lien against the property, and so you really should consult an attorney and, and your lender uh, well in advance of the closing and, and preferably even before the contract is written to make sure that that's going to work that way. I don't have it noted on the outline, but if you run into trouble from a buyer standpoint and your lender won't allow it into the trust or let the trust actually make the loan um, or borrow the money, I should say, then we can always do a deed post-closing transferring title from you personally and individually to your trust. That's pretty common. It doesn't violate any due on sale clause. And as a matter of fact, federal law uh, offers protection in that regard. So that, that's always an option. Uh, my law office, Light of Law, charges $150 to do those deeds where we were involved with the closing and the clerk charges $35 or so. So it's not a, a you know tremendous amount of money to solve that problem that way. Uh, lastly, just like with a buyer, the way you designate the trust as an entity or a party, the short form of that is just the name, comma, trustee. Uh, better, though, is the name of the trustee and then the name of the trust. In this case, Brian D. Lytle, comma, trustee of the Lytle Family Revocable Trust, dated January 1, 2020, for example. The reason the short form is often used is because, you know, most contracts are um, uh, prepared and signed electronically these days. There may not be enough room for the full form, the better form, and so it's shortened here. Um, even better than that is, is when, even when you need to do that, is to have an asterisk and then to carry that down to a different pr provision in the contract to, uh, you know, link it and actually describe the trust. That's really all there is in this particular segment. Obviously, there's a lot more that could be talked about in terms of a trust. So talk to your Liz Moore and Associates agent and he or she can direct you, and I'm happy to help, of course. Have a great day. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications for our next installment of Get Smart with Brian Lytle.